Let's take it with her. Uh, today we are with Angelo Stolopush in Athens, Greece. He's on the Forbes Coaches Council. He's a coach supervisor, a coach trainer, a founding member, and past president of ICF Greece. He is a big fan of positivity, which we're going to get to learn about together today. Um, and his presentation style is one where we invite conversation and sharing. So please feel free to type questions in the chat and we will pause to answer them as we go and get to as many as many as we can. Uh, a couple announcements. I've been getting lots of questions about the recordings of these events. And yes, they will be made available. Uh, you can look for an email in your inbox probably Wednesday of next week and you'll get um, a link with access to all the events that we posted this week so stay tuned for that and that why don't I share the CCE password and then pass it to you Angelo so the opening CCE password is 6834 that's 6834 three four there it is in the chat um i'll share it in the chat again in a couple minutes and then that will be the last share of the the opening password um and also i'll give you the code or the link now where you can claim your cce so here it is for the few of you that just hopped on the opening code is six eight three four all right everyone thanks for being here angelos over to you good morning or good evening and uh, i'm very happy to be here thank you elizabeth and i see that we have people all, all the way from seattle until um, new delhi so hello to everybody and uh, hope more people will join us from uh, around from that uh, uh and uh beyond that space from everywhere and it's my i'm very happy to present to you this uh, this model, and uh, as Elizabeth said, my my tendency is towards positivity. However, the model that we will introduce today is a model which is um, based on mindfulness, and uh, we 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 have selected the model that we have been working lately ever since the coronavirus outbreak because we we noticed that uh, a lot of people. A lot of people's lives has changed in a very uh, shocking way, and sometimes, well, it helps to do the practice that we'll, we will introduce through the this model that we that is being called snack. And but before we do that, I'd like to point out a few things. I like to have this webinar to be as interactive as possible. So, in the course of the one hour that we are having together today it will be great to have your questions or your answers to our questions and uh, your comments and everything and you can post them of course to the chat in the chat box so not only you can do that but we would encourage you to do that because we really like to have this discussion uh as elizabeth is saying has said um she said that regarding me that i um i had the tendency for positivity and positivity in coaching is uh, very important but that does not exclude the difficult question because as coaches we always work with a difficult question and uh, reflection because we are seeking what are the great questions that will help us evolve so first before we start, let's do a little bit, a little bit of a centering exercise. So please uh, sit in your chair or whatever you're sitting in, uh, in a way that is uh, that feels comfortable, but in a way that is uh, just bring your attention to how your body is uh, sitting and uh, bring your attention to the the texture and uh, the feel of the seat and. Uh, the temperature and then focus on your breath and inhale a two and exhale at four inhale a two and exhale at four they bring your attention to something that is very dear to you perhaps a picture of your favorite animal uh, or a picture of one of your beloved people perhaps a child that is laughing something that is very uh, dear to you and also cheerful and then let's open up the space for the next 15 minutes that we will be together and let's start from here let's start with a poem 
from David White is called Sometime. Sometimes, if you move carefully through the forest, breathing like the ones in the old stories who would cross a shimmering bed of leaves without a sound, you come to a place whose only task is to trouble you with tiny but frightening requests, conceived out of nowhere, but in this place beginning to lead everywhere. Requests to stop what you are doing right now, and to stop what you are becoming while you do it. Questions that can make or unmake a light. Questions that have patiently waited for you. Questions that have no right to go away. So let me share my screen with a presentation and we hope that we will produce good questions for ourselves and a uh, small introduction about me that Elizabeth has already done. Um, this is the model that we will be working on today. Uh, it's called snack uh, from the words stop, notice, accept, curious, and kindness. It's a model based on the work of Dr. Naumburg, and we will introduce each step, and we will try to create some questions that are meaningful. And I would invite you not only to use the chat box, but the company of a paper and a pen. I think that will help you, that will help the, the questions and the, the insights to remain with you for a much longer time after the webinar has been completed. And uh, I always say that um, the road from the mind until the paper is very long. And someone else said, we write in order to understand what we are thinking. So with these two thoughts, I think that you will encourage yourself enough to write down in goodwill and um, perhaps in your own language, in whichever language you feel comfortable with writing. And let's start introducing each step and then start inquiring what does it mean every, every step for us. First step is stop. And we mean by that to just stop whatever you're doing. Speaking about the coronavirus crisis, we have experienced a big stop. So stopping by definition requires us to begin again. We can always begin again. The first step to a new beginning is to stop now. So in order to begin again, we have to stop now. And I want you to imagine yourself having to stop and Let's think about a metaphor. Having to stop in a stop sign, meaning when you drive, that means that you have to stop your vehicle, you have to stop your car and wait because someone else will be passing and that someone else has a priority over you. So picture that, bring that into mind. Having to stop for someone else because someone else has the priority and perhaps it gets even better. You don't know who that person is, and you don't know if that person will cross in front of you, but you have to stop, and you have to give the priority to some other person. As I was reflecting about that, interestingly enough, I noticed that in the Greek language, sometimes we use the word uh, meet someone, I don't know, in relation to answer. So when you're meeting someone, when you expect someone to cross the street because you're on a stop sign and you have to allow that, that the other person to uh, pass because the other person has the priority. It's like meeting with that other person. And that is an answer to something. And I wonder, this answer is surfacing because you have a question. And the question is what is bringing you to the stop sign. Now, the stop sign is something which does not last for long. But how about the red sign? When you really have to stop and wait for a certain amount of time. And that means usually when we are in our routine, where we are inside our heads, inside our, you know, the, the daily routine, um, going for our work or coming back or going from one um, uh, work to another or whatever is in the, you know, the, the list of to-do of every day, then you have to pull the handbrake perhaps and change uh, the station on the radio or do something else. So can you bring that back into mind when you are stopping and you know that you will be stopped for, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds? depending on the, on the red light. And you don't really have anything to do there. And you're not really very happy, usually, to have him to stop because you are so busy. And But sometimes you 
become more nervous. Well, sometimes you take advantage of that. And you, you take advantage and do for a few seconds something that you could not do while you were on the move. And then what do you usually do? Which one of those persons are you usually when you are in, in the red when you, when you have to stop on the red side. Angelos, do you see that question in the chat? Yes, now I do. Some of us says, but do we really need to go through full stop in order to embrace new beginning? Can we just continue on a different path? Well, that's a good question. And um, I wonder how can we, what, how can we ask? But I realize that this is a very important question for you that probably implies that um, you would rather not stop in order to embrace a new beginning but you know stop is an awareness stop stopping something is the beginning of an awareness or is it is the beginning of a new beginning or it's stopping is a change it could also be uh, it could also mean stop your movement or it could also mean uh stop waiting stop waiting it could it could mean change what you're doing change your routine stop waiting let's imagine yourself being in a waiting line and then at some point you can stop waiting and it could be that perhaps um you can go to the next queue that has just opened who is uh, shorter or you don't you know you can move in front and to the front desk of the waiting line that you're waiting and be served or something else but it means that i think the question here is how 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 flexible we are how aware we are how eager we are to a, any kind of change how which could imply both stopping stopping the movement or could imply stopping the waiting as well can he bring into your mind situations uh, where uh, you had to stop and not just with the, without with the analogies that I offer anything in work or in life where you have to stop sometimes if you don't stop, you will be missing something. Yes, thank you, Zohar. Zohar says that uh, that's more clear to me. If something is also the moment of the change, uh, then it means a lot. It means a lot to us. Yes, stop what you do in order to either do something else or in order to consider or reflect or doing the next step, which is to take notice what is happening within and what is happening around you and then start collecting the data and we we're talking about the data we're not talking about rationalizing or reasoning about what is happening because we usually would do that automatically like i don't know um do you like it here no i don't like it here because um there's too much people or it's too noisy or you know we're rationalizing and we're just talking about data, noticing the data. Even if new information arises, that is still data. And it will be helpful to be attentive to your notice ability, how, how artful you are in how uh, you notice things and how you collect data. And it's, um, it's just come to my attention from uh, early on. And uh, I noticed uh, with the help of one of my teachers that if you take into account, if, if you think about the things that you do as a routine each day, for example, taking the bus to go to work, or so that means you pass from the state from the same side of the street um, each day, and you pass you pass from the other side of the street each day. And what do you do? Do you notice what is happening around? Do you look out? for the information that might not be what you are searching for, but it are the information that uh, is available. And um, the change of the information from day to day means that something has changed in that road, in your environment, in your community. Something has changed. And the first step to start processing is to notice data. And I think if if we hold the skill of noticing, we, we are becoming better and better. And uh, if uh, I assume most of the people here are coaches, so noticing and be attentive to our noticeability is uh, very important as well. It could be a part of the active listening, noticing, noticing what is happening. Even if you don't think that is important for you, you will never know until you notice. And on the other hand, if you have a bias that this is not, not what I am looking for, so I don't really have to take notice of 
anything here, that means that you will have a big, uh, you will have, you will um, encourage a, per, uh, a daily loss of data. So that means you will be gradually disengaged from your reality when you don't notice what is happening. And things are happening. Things are happening in front of you when you're looking for something else. And it's and sometimes they are happening because you don't notice. And sometimes things change for you and you and, they, and these things affect you because you don't notice. And the thing is that this is getting better. The more you, this is a skill that can be acquired and this, this is a skill that can be developed. So the more you notice, the more you will make yourself able to start noticing more. And uh, what else is there in noticing? What do you have to notice? Or what is your best way for you to notice? What serves you better in order to notice, to really notice what is happening? And how many things can you, can elude you? How many things can, can you miss when you're not observing or when you're looking, but you're not seeing. Can you tell what's the difference between looking and seeing? Chris has wrote something great in the chat. He says, my father-in-law talks of going back to the bridge. It's a place with a great view, but you usually hurry past it. Mm, yeah, yes. So sometimes you, uh, yeah, I remember uh, at some point uh, a few months ago, a friend of mine was making a metaphor and he, 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 he made that uh, comparison between him and the way that he stares when he sees something that is important with a dog. And he said, I like to look like a dog, to uh, look like a dog. Have you noticed how dogs are looking when they see something? Or they're, when they're, they're they are searching for something, how for how long can they look? So when you go to a bridge, you are at a. Uh, I think that's very good. From so th thank you, Niha. I, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. And I think that uh, yeah, going to a bridge, which means that you have picked up um, a magnificent spot, so you can uh, look, uh, you know, from high point of view, and you can have a. Uh, many degrees, uh, a wide uh, uh, view of what is happening. And usually there are a lot of uh, boats passing. Uh, so there is a lot to see. There is a lot to see on the bridge, on the bus, uh, at work. There is a lot to notice. And sometimes there is a lot of clutter and perhaps you're missing. Perhaps you're living in an environment that has many, many, many pieces of information. And what you're trying, uh, what you want to notice or m what might be, uh, you know, valuable for you, you might, you may w uh, need to take a good look, as we say. And uh, yes, as uh, Zafar said, seeing involves some interpretation of what we are looking at. Exactly. So what, so what am I looking at? Have you ever said that to yourself? So what am I looking at? How, uh, what is the, you know, the meaning making or what is important or what has changed? And so if something has changed, what does it mean? Uh, there are some signs, there are some posters here. Some things are said, some, th some information is still valid, for example, for events that are for the future and some for events that happened in the past. And everything means something. I mean, if you have a lot of posters of events for the past, that means that uh, there's not much is going on in this, in this area. So there are signs that are saying something and there are signs that are writing something Thing, but don't really say anything because not all who speak have a voice or they may not have a voice for you or that voice may not reach your ear your ears if your ears are closed or attuned to something else or your focus is somewhere else not all who speak have a voice and i wonder where do i find my voice and speak it out loud where do you found your where can you find your voice and speak it out loud what have you noticed where is the best place for you to find your voice? The yeah, answer so is stopping the morning routine to sit to meditate. Yes, for sure. That's that's a perfect uh, that's a perfect discipline to start becoming more aware of your noticeability. Yes, you could be looking but not paying attention. Seeing involves paying attention. Exactly. So we need to stop and then notice. Because if you don't stop, you won't be able to notice. Does that make sense so far? I cannot see your uh, lovely faces, but I can read your comments. So, yes, Chris says yes. Okay, so, great. Now, 
Let's move to the next one. The next up is about acceptance. And now this is a tricky one, of course, because acceptance does not mean liking, does not mean wanting, choosing, or supporting. What we're talking about here is accept whatever you're struggling with. Accept whatever you're struggling with. That could be time that you don't have, that could be the kids and the noise, that could be the sleepiness, that could be your frustration, staying at home, especially this day with the lockdown. Acknowledge Acknowledge it for what it is and without judgment. And we as a, a phrase it's a little bit cliche this day that's it being called um it is what it is. So this is what we're talking about. The acceptance. It's not about something that we we're happy with. It's about accepting the fact that this is real, that this is our reality, like accepting the fact that we are living in the coronavirus crisis days and uh, the data is this and that. And uh, we need to accept that. And we know how important acceptance is for uh, for a coaching process. Uh, if you go back to the, the coaching curve, the, based on the build curve, um, the, um, the first thing to do uh, before, in order to start your commitment into uh, designing actions for your goal, is to accept the situation as it is. Accept that this is how it is. And regardless of whether I like it or not, I had to accept it first in order to start creating new behaviors, start designing actions, start make start making the choices, start making decisions that will help me move forward to my future or to my desired future or to start doing something about or take the responsibility. So in order to take a responsibility, which I think is so quintessential to coaching is first is that First thing that we have to do is to accept accept the situation as it is, accept the conditions that we are living in, accept. And it starts from here. Let's start from number one. I have to accept me, and not in a narcissistic way, but accept me. Usually the paradox of change is that I accept myself with um, all my all the things that are not working very well right now, accepting uh, my weaknesses, accepting my my failures, accepting what is uh, what I have been very consistent in not achieving for a long period of time. Accepting is about is about managing the difficult the difficult scenes, accepting something that is, we're talking about here, accepting something that it's somehow very difficult to do. We're talking about accepting something which is, you know, very hard to swallow, as we say. Accept something. Can I offer an analogy here? The analogy of the snowball, you know, all this, this, this souvenirs that you have from different cities that you're uh, going as a tourist and they have, you know, in a little, uh, crystal ball, you they have all that snow, they have uh, buildings from the city, and then it has snow that is falling, and you have to, or if you uh, move a little bit, the, this, this, this ball, this snowball, then uh, you will see the snow moving around, and you will, you will have to wait until it all falls down. I think by accepting is enabling the snow to fall down, so we can see the clear picture. I think before becoming able to accept, it's like watching all the snow, which means we're seeing something which is not very clear, and we have to clear the picture out. And the first step to do that is to accept and ask yourself, who do you want to accept today? And perhaps that's a good way to start. And uh, sharing on the chat box, what would you like to accept? What is hard for you to accept at this point today for you that has to do with you, has to do with your world, but has to do with who you want to be in the world? Neha says, that, could you please share some thoughts about accepting a repetitive action of a loved one that makes one angry despite discussions about not repeating that action? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Neha. Uh, I think the best way to deal with that is to focus on ourselves and ac- and focus on what is the, the implication, how uh, does the other person um, behavior is making us 
feel? How am I feeling because of that? And sometimes, sometimes I'm feeling something that is a little bit um, um, very hard to accept. Sometimes it's um, sometimes we notice in ourselves the effect of what the other person is doing. And I don't know if that makes sense for you. Uh, sometimes I say, okay, so the other person is doing their own stuff, but look at how that affects me. And I don't like. I don't like me. I don't like. I don't, I don't like that when when I'm becoming that person because it could be that I am being manipulated or it could be that I'm being just, you know, derangled because because of how I react to what the other person is doing. So accepting is more like, you know, the difficult acceptance right now. It's about, so the other person, let, let's say, let's make a hypothesis. The other person may do that forever and may never stop or may never cheat. Can I accept that and stop reacting the way that I react? Can I accept that this is regardless of whether I like the behavior of the other person or I don't? Probably. Obviously, I don't. But if the power of acceptance here is that when I accept that this will be, this will be my reality. I know that I don't like it, but how do I want to go on with my life? How do I want to go on with my stuff? Do I want to be angry or sad or annoyed or disturbed or whatever, a negative thing because the other person is doing like that? Why do I see this connection? You say, despite discussions about not repeating that an action. So you have made some kind of discussions with the other person. Perhaps the other person said, okay, I got you. You're right. I'm wrong. I will stop doing that and then he or she will continue in doing that because A, B, C, D reason. And then you are with yourself. And then one thing that you will make good room for you, you know, is when you accept that, okay, so this is what is happening. How do I want to be while well, this is what is happening? Accept what I have no not to control of. Yes, Eva, thank you very much, Eva. Uh, replied, accept what I have not control of. And um, Elizabeth said, I'm accepting a lot of unknown about what the future holds because, you know, it's the future, which is unknown. And if, if you look at it from a different lens, yes, it makes sense. Future is unknown. And um, I'm by accepting that is like making the peace is not I'm not fighting with it. It's not that I like it. It's not that I'm not interested in fighting out. It's that I'm not fighting with that. I'm not in a fight with the unknown. I'm not fight with what the unknown provokes in me. Accepting Tammy says accepting that despite is being being re unreasonable, the six AM to nine AM limitation on being allowed to exercise, run or walking outside during lockdown making social distancing even more challenging as everyone is now on the street at the same time. And you had to accept that, that you are perhaps, okay, so you are perhaps complying. If I'm getting you time, you're complying, but a lot of other people are not complying. And yes, yes, I think that I can uh, relate to that because that's more or less the situation here. So it's not just about you and the regulations, it's about what the other people are doing. And then you said, okay, so I don't like it, but I mean, that does not help me in that conversation that I have with myself. Uh, so I accept that this is what it is. And because I accept that, and I think that going back to the work, to the couple of words that we had with Elizabeth in the beginning, it's a positivity. It's about, okay, so this is the situation. I don't like it, but uh, what would be best for me is to look at what I can do with that situation. And that helps me um, distance myself from the negative emotions and um, a little bit down on that road. There are some new and positive emotions are surfacing because I'm engaging and I focus into what I want to create versus what I want to, uh, well, what I want to, what I hate about what is happening. And so focusing is uh, where you focus as we can remember the work of uh, David Copperwriter with the pressure to be courage. He was saying that um, where we put our focus is uh, where reality has been created. So uh, when we put our focus on what we want to create, then usually positive feelings are starting to emerge and say, that's the next step. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome here. Accepting that I do best. So far says, accepting that I do the best I can to assist my dear mother, who is in a lockdown, the elderly, 
protected village she lives in. Accepting that I do my best, yes, but also yes, yes. I think that accepting that as well is, I, I assume that uh, it, this is very important for you and you have found that this is very helpful that you have to accept that. Sometimes in that sense, accepting that neurons make peace with it, make peace with it, which making peace finds serenity and then this comes to mind, serenity versus um, calmness, because serenity is something, it's, it's an inner condition, and calm is an outer condition. So serenity is about making peace with what is happening, is accepting the situation. It's not about surrendering, it's about accepting. And the acceptance is it's necessary in order to move forward. And let's move to the next step, which is becoming curious, and this is so cool central to coaching, of course, curiosity, genuine curiosity and constructive curiosity. Now let's ground yourself with questions about your experience and environment. What am I feeling? What do I do right now? And curiosity is a quality that is related to inquisitive thinking, such as exploration, investigation, and learning, and becoming curious. And going back to the, um, the data that we have collected on the step of notice, because we, d we discussed the second step was notice. So that's the state, the, the step where we were collecting data and now curious, becoming curious. And let's talk a little bit about curiosity. Because am I, so this, these are the data. Are these, what is behind this data? And what else can I understand? And where, where else can I get data? And uh, is, can I, really be very conscious about what I think because sometimes what I think is so or data uh, thoughts and uh, um, interpretations uh, are so embedded in uh, data and sometimes uh, we are we are informed let's say by journalists about things or by friends and we are mixing up data with interpretation for example a very simple example Example, the weather today is good. Is that data or interpretation? I'm curious. The weather is good today is, of course, interpretation because the weather is good or bad depending on where you are and what do you like and how you would like the weather to be. The weather is rainy or the weather is cloudy or the weather is sunny. Now, that is data. Or the weather is hot hot or the weather is cold, that is interpretation because hot for you might mean change and or it might mean, and I'm talking about Celsius, or it could be uh, 18 or it could be 35 and depends on, uh, you know, what am I accustomed to or how do I, you know, how do I like uh, the weather to be, the temperature and or the stock market. That was a bad day for the stock market. Well, who says that? Depending on your portfolio could be a good day or could be a bad day. I don't know, right? So, but I think if you if you become curious, you can go to uh, you know a different uh, direction, which is uh, yeah more more intriguing. And let's think about some, uh, how easy it is for you to have access to data. Sometimes we. Okay, now the, the movies are not playing, the theaters are closed, perhaps in most of the countries. But when you're going through the uh, the movies guide and you're trying to find out which is a good new movie to see, um, you don't really get to form your own opinion you're, because the information itself is being embedded with the interpretation of the journalist or the movie critic or whoever is writing uh, article and um, before even you realize or you get the information of who is playing and what's the genre and what is the plot and um, what's the director and so on uh, you immediately and sometimes subconsciously you already have an idea of uh, whether that movie is good or bad so we do that every day when we're selecting movies, when we're selecting products in a supermarket or even vote for politicians, uh, it's all been pre-selected and the interpretation is embedded in the information itself. So we're living in a time of fast food and we're also living in a time of fast thought. So we don't really get the opportunity or we don't really get to be very much trained into deliver 
our own thinking, be the owners of our thoughts. We consume thoughts that are ready-made, fast thought. This is the era of the fast thinking. We live over our heads. We really, we really, we're living out of our heads. We're living in somebody else's head. We don't really get to use our head to make a decision for the movie that we make. Sometimes we don't really get a decision to say that movie was good or bad, even after we see the movie. Can you think about that? We said, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage, change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Yes, uh, the curious text box back Looks up again, and uh, okay, we will uh, look at all the model uh, again at the end. Uh, thank you very much that, for that, Chris. Yes, that's like a very good quote. That's helping a lot. Thank you very much. How does one make peace with something that involves fear? It's the same routine, Aniha, with uh, trying to find out how, what, what exactly is happening out there that triggers that fear. And fear is about avoiding something. And uh, what are you avoiding exactly? And it's, it's not the thing that can be addressed in five, ten minutes. It's about, for sure, it's about looking at the eye of what makes you fearful. They say, talking about movies, they say that uh, it art and movies, the art is a window to our soul. So how do you, how do you look at the art? as a window to your soul. How aware you are that when you go to the movies or when you um, start the dialogue with any piece of art, any kind of art, um, that you're actually, you are actually opening up a window to your own soul. So you see not the world outside, but the world inside. That's what you're seeing. You can use art as a process of self-awareness. Now, the last step is kindness. We need, we want to respond to ourselves and others with our mistakes and all with kindness and observe how that helps things get back on track. Now, kindness is a behavior marked by ethical characteristics. It is a pleasant disposition and concern and consideration for others. It is considered a virtue and is recognized as a value in many cultures and sometimes in many religions as well. So what can you notice about kindness and how, you know, in which degree is uh, kindness embedded in your own life? There are so many things and many ways to, to start. Like you look at all these little rocks, little stones, you, you can see these different kind of messages. And as coaches, and we will love the change. And the thing is, how where are we and how are are we dressed up all in kindness with the right intention, with kindness as our intention, and what we're doing? Are we doing that with kindness? And I, I borrow that quote, well, I have changed that a little bit from Eduardo Galeano. Am I not what I do in order to change who I am? Galeano said, we are what we do, you know, we are, what we are what we do in order to change who we are. So it makes sense. The way that you're trying to achieve the things that you want to achieve defines you. Are you doing that with kindness? And can you notice how many people are seeking human kindness? We're talking about the common humanity. How open you are to stop and notice and accept with curiosity what is happening and who and what is calling your inner kindness, your inner human kindness. And what does that kindness can make you feel? And what does that kindness can make others feel? And I selected the dandelion because you cannot force it. Perhaps you, you, you can blow, but the dandelion goes wherever it wants, sometimes uninvited, and whichever direction, and it chooses its own pace. So, have you ever thought about thoughts, ideas, actions of kindness that are being spread, are being diffused, are being in a very wide angle around you and can travel very far and can have a lasting effect. And sometimes you don't notice that, but you're carrying a little piece of a dandelion. How about that? How about your human kindness acting like a dandelion? And I'd like you to close that picture and hold that picture with you as something that you have and as something that you're given, given the, it is gift, it's gift. And we, I think we should also be mindful of that when you're given a gift, you're also receiving a gift because it's 
the energy and the positive emotions, going back to positivity, the, the positive emotions that you're you're creating for your own self as well, for everybody. Cameron Christian says, love the metaphor of a dandelion to kindness. Yes, thank you very much. I find that very moving and yes, kindness. You don't have to force you. You cannot force your kindness. You can offer your kindness, right? And you... You can offer that to whatever you do. Do that out of kindness. Kindness breeds kindness, says Eva. Yes, Eva. Thank you very much. Now, I know that we are approaching the end of uh, the, the webinar. And now, for the ones that ask to bring back the box, this is the whole model. So, we these are five steps. Let's do a recap. Five steps. Stop. And we're talking about just stop whatever you're doing. Stopping, by definition, requires us to begin again. We can always begin again, but the first step to a new beginning is to stop now and notice about what is happening within and around you. Accept what is happening, regardless of whether you like it or not. Become curious about what is really happening and avoiding the fast, the fast thought condition that we're living in and then respond with kindness, create kindness. And uh, one last question, which is the biggest question, is what is the first thing that you can start, start doing today or tomorrow morning for those that live in Canada and the States? Uh, what is the first thing that you can do to, to invite the snack into your everyday life? Invite change. Invite this change into your everyday life to live out, to, to, to have yourself, to have a snack, to have a snack with positivity. What is the first thing you can do to invite the snack model into your everyday life? And you can write down or you can write that down in, a, in the chat box. And you can write that down in your paper with your pen and take it. Uh, um, I like to uh, write these great ideas into this uh, speech bubble, which is like a positive paper. And then uh, either uh, collect that and preserve that in a jar that I have with my important thoughts that I keep it. I invite you to just write one word that is very important for you and then keep it, keep that one word as a talisman for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Angela, I'm back. Thank, thank you. Very much. Girl, thank you so much. Um, we'd love to hear your one word talismans in the chat while I'm wrapping up here. Yeah.